a function in terms of x. Okay, where it's telling us that the expression over here, the variable, the thing that changes is x itself. Okay, so that's the use of the notation f x. Okay, and very often at a very uh, basic level that we're seeing things now. Okay, you can see your y. Okay, to be somewhat similar to f x. Okay, you will also see equations like that where it's telling you y equals to f x. Okay, uh, this is when it comes to ground drawing. We'll see that later on. Okay, but I want us to be familiar at this stage about such a notation f x. Okay, we know how to actually compute the value for f negative one. What this means is that x is being replaced by negative one. So that was also discussed yesterday. And then the very last thing that I went through yesterday was in part two, finding out the possible real values of f x, and that is about finding the range of values. Okay, that satisfies this. Uh, equation over here, okay, whereby we know that x can be changed all the time, okay, it can be negative number, can be positive number, can be decimal, can be fraction, all sorts of number, okay, when we have so many numbers to be placed into this function itself, okay, what are the possibilities of the values that come out of it, okay, and that possibility, again, it is infinite, and we cannot express and list out every single one of them. That's why we write it as an inequality. Okay? Hence, part 2 yesterday, we saw that with x squared being always more than or equal to 0 for all real values of x. Okay? That will help us to see that the entire expression, whereby I multiply by negative 2 first, okay, will become negative. And then followed by plus 4, we see that it is always less than or equal to 4. This is an expression for our function. Hence, it tells us that all the possible real values of fx is actually less than or equal to 4. The highest it can go to will be 4. Okay? Otherwise, any other value you substitute inside, okay, it will actually always be less than 4. Okay? So that was our interest. Any questions in understanding this? Okay. Next, we go into our completed square form again. This is something that we did in our Emacs already. Okay. So I just really want to go through that again in case some of you are still not getting what I meant, uh, what I explained in Emacs. Okay. So. Um, okay. What if I want to apply the same question to a function such as this? Okay, fx equals to x squared plus 6x minus 4. Okay, how are we supposed to find all possible real values of fx? Okay, so that's the key question that we want to ask ourselves. Right? In this particular case, if I want to apply the same thing as what we did over here, okay, that might be what you're thinking about. Whereby you're thinking x squared more than or equal to 0, same as how we started. Okay? And then, okay, you tell me that it's not same plus 4 plus 2 on both sides, right? So the next thing I want to do is plus 6x. But there is a problem. Okay? If you want to plus 6x on both sides, right? X is actually an unknown. Okay? And then this is not a number also. Yeah. Right, so we will never be able to determine okay, just like what we have over here a number to tell us that fx is something that is less than or equal to 4. Because now reading this expression itself, okay, this inequality, we see that this thing here is more than or equal to 6x. But what exactly is 6x? You understand? This is not a number. Okay. So this process here, okay, doesn't quite work. We cannot extend what we just did over here to here. Okay. But when we were doing Emacs, we learned this thing called completing the square. And the thing about completing the square is that, okay, if I can write it like that, okay, whereby my star and my triangle is a number, we know that this entire thing here will always be more than or equal to zero. That's the beauty of it. Okay? So in order to find out the possible real values of fx, okay, 
Okay, we need to do our completing the square. Then we can proceed with a process that's similar to this. Okay, so. Doing our completing the square. Minus line minus line. If we are able to complete the square to achieve this, x plus 3, we have that square minus 15. Proud of Okay, so once I achieve this, okay, then we can apply the similar principle over here where we see that your x plus 3 square is more than or equal to 0 for all real values of x. Okay. And then we have to subtract the 13. Okay. And now we see that this is the expression for fx. Because fx is equal to this for which we transform into this. Okay, so we see that fx is more than or equal to negative. Okay, so the possible real values, all the possible real values of fx will be more than or equal to negative 13. So negative 13 is the lowest it can go. In fact, it is consistent with our understanding that this is a heavy shape, uh, heavy face shape curve. Okay, such that we have a minimum point. Okay, so in our y-axis, if I place it over here, the lowest it can go will be negative 13. Otherwise, for any point that is above, okay, that turning point, that minimum point, your y value will actually be greater than negative 13. Okay? So that's the whole purpose for us to find out how to express a quadratic expression into a completed square form. Yes. What if uh, x is what? The value for x is lower than negative 13. This is not telling us the x value is less than negative. Uh, it's more than equal to negative 13. It is the y value. It is not possible, man. the graph doesn't even appear below. Negative 13, your graph is like that. Yeah. Below negative 13, there's no graph. Because your graph is like that, uh, you understand? Okay, yeah. Linear graph, okay, to find the maximum minimum. No, it's not possible, man. This is not a linear equation, that is a quadratic Ah, what Linear equals infinite. Yeah, because linear is no a minimum but maximum one. Your line goes on infinite. Ah. Any other questions? Okay. We try out some example. Thank <laughs> you.
is what we used to do, but right? Okay, you probably didn't do it, uh, many, not just not you, okay, but some people may not do it because you don't bother to write such a statement. Okay, but usually we have to write this statement. Right? To find out the value of y. Okay, using fx itself, you don't even need to write a statement, you just write it like that. We know that you're substituting x equals to 1. Okay? No, it's not just to save time. There is a bigger purpose to it because we're learning functions over here. Okay, as you progress upwards to your A level maths, you will learn more about functions as a greater meaning for this equation. Yeah, okay. So it is to showcase to us what is the input of our x. Okay, that's our, our understanding at this level now. Okay, what is the input for x to get this? Don't go and replace it with y. Okay? Be consistent with what the question gives you. Right, so looking at part i, we are given this fx equals to a quadratic function that's x squared plus 3x minus 6. Okay? We want to find all possible real values of fx. Right? So we can only do so okay, when we do our completed square form. Yeah, just now that one was also greater than or equals to. Okay, I forgot what's 
and stuff. But you said that was like the minimum point also. Yeah, the minimum point also. So all the Y coordinates is bigger than that one. This is also minimum point. Minimum value is at negative 8 and 1 quarter. Minimum value, ah, same interpretation, no? Okay. Yes. Statement actually means 
words. So I'm trying to do the interpretation for you over here, whereby for this inequality, an alternative idea that you can get out of it is that the y coordinates of the quadratic graph is greater than or equal to negative 8 and 1 quarter. So you must be able to switch okay, from a worded statement into the corresponding concept itself. Okay, it may not be that straightforward okay, as compared to your emacs. Okay, and that is the distinction, that's the difference itself. Okay, and then um what else I want to say? Uh, for AMS. Sorry, I forgot it. I lost my train of thoughts. Okay, now I if it comes back then I'll say again. Uh, any questions? Yes. Actually EMAX really concluded uh, this is the whole process. Same same process that we did in EMAX. Yeah, it's the exact same process that we did in EMAX. We, in fact we concluded that the turning point is just negative 3 over 2, negative 8 and 1 quarter. Yeah, I went through all this to conclude for us how we read the turning point of a computer square form. Yeah, okay. You can go through this method, not an issue. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Okay, if you go on. Uh.
body is chewable to divide by two. You can do that. Then drink water. Wait. Otherwise, you can write it three quarter square. Yeah. It means the same.
what Mr. Chen said just now, we don't study uh, push the truth, right? Okay, so therefore, okay, don't just blindly do and do and do. Make sense of what you're trying to uh, actually solve over here. And then after that, it's a maximum point.